What's up ladies and gents, welcome to the season three best list. Uh, this one was actually quite tricky to make, took a lot of research, theory crafting, that kind of thing, but we got there in the end and I'm fairly happy with the results. It's going to be sort of a, a generalization, so there's definitely item slots that you can switch in and out uh, as certain comps, in certain matchups, in certain brackets. That's just the nature of the game. You don't have any sort of one size fits all thing that's perfect for everything. So keep that in mind. We'll talk a little bit more about that at the end uh, and, and sort of gloss over it a little bit. But at that point, it's more, you know, time to use your own brain. Uh, if you get to that level, you should be doing it without even realizing it. So you'll be fine. So I'm going to start off with the honor gear since that's nice and obvious. So we're going to go with the neck and we give the standard pendant of salvation. Uh, we are going to go for the wrists, which is the Mooncloth Cuffs. And then the belt is going to change depending on if you're Horde or Alliance. If you're Dwarf, then you're going to go for the Mooncloth Belt. And I'm going to just put that there for now. If you're Undead, you probably want the NG Belt against most things. So you you can either skip farming this or you can spend time farming. This is obviously a lot of, lot of honor time invested to get it. Uh, so you can get it if you want. Most of the time on Horde, I'm going to be using Engie Belt, as it's going to save you a lot of times. Uh, last couple of items are going to be the ring. If I can find it. And again, if you're on Horde, you can actually use two rings. You can use the Season 2 ring and the Season 3 ring, because you're losing some resilience from using the Engie Belt. So you want to make that back up on the ring. Ring's a pretty good slot to do that. Um... You can also do it on the boots. It depends on whether or not you have a good PvE boots, PvE ring, that kind of thing. Either is fine. And then obviously last is going to be the trinket. So that's the honor gear. That's nice and easy. Now, I'm assuming you played Season 2 and that you have a base gear set. So obviously you got your four Mooncloth pieces. And... I'm going to I'm going to gloss over quite quickly of, of of the ordering of what to upgrade. Uh I haven't spent that much time looking into that yet. So that may change. But this is just a best list so I'll tell you overall what to get. I assume most people are looking at it to see what PvE items they should go for. Um so if you are freshly freshly dinged and freshly gearing up uh, a new character then I will be doing another video on sort of what items to go for, what, what ordering, that sort of thing as well. So that probably will be more up your alley at first compared to this one, which is more for just like being full geared, right? So next we're going to do legs, chest, shoulders, and gloves. And that's just standard. That's just going to be the Vengeful Mooncloth set. Nice and easy, and obviously you can upgrade piece by piece um, from your season two. As I say, I'm not go I'm not going to go into too much detail now with regards to the ordering. Usually, it's like chest and legs are the most impactful pieces, so I go for those first. I'm not sure which one this season is going to be the biggest upgrade, but it will be either chest or legs. Uh, you can easily look that up yourself. And then after that, I usually go for the weapon and then the offhand, uh, or the offhand and then the weapon. Now, in Season 3, the Wand is pretty good, because before we didn't have healing on a Wand, whereas now we do. So the Wand is probably going to be quite an early take for your Resilience set. Now, let's do the Weapons next, so that I can talk about that a little bit more. Now, there's two two real options for PvE weapons. you got Staff of Immaculate Recovery, you got Apostle of Argus. Staff of Immaculate Recovery has more regen on it, even though it has a little bit less healing. It has more stam, more regen, a little bit less in. Overall, it's the better pick, but they are relatively close. So if you get Apostle of Argus, it's not the worst thing in the world either. Sadly, there is no good one-hander for priests with a, a good amount of regen on, similar to Light Fathom, Se Light Fathom Scepter uh, in, in Season 2, as we only really have the Crystal Spire of Carabor, and the equip on this is not that good for priests in Arena, since you're mostly healing with the Palm Shield Renew, and this equip does not affect those spells, sadly. So the equip is only going to affect your Holy Nova and your Flash Heal and your Great Heal, which is sort of niche 
in terms of what spells we're actually going to cast. So usually you're not going to get good value out of this. So this is where we go for the, the staves that have more well-rounded stats. So we're going to put Staff of Macula Recovery to start with. Uh, and this is what I was talking about with regards to the PvP uh, wand. So we're going to start with the Narrow Blessed Life Rod. And this is going to be our general healing setup. Now, if we get targeted or if we're facing something where we know we're going to get targeted, you want to swap to your PvP weapons, which is going to be the Vengeful Gladiator Salvation. Obviously, it's going to be the Vengeful Gladiator's Reprieve and then the Wand. So this is why picking up the Wand relatively early is nice because it's a pretty good pick. The problem with it is, and this is where your, your own judgment comes in, you're not going to be using this all the time. So if you spend points on something that you're not using all the time, you're not getting value out of those points a lot of the time. So it's very much uh, a judgment call for you, depending on what wand you have, whether or not you go for this early on. Um, and and that's kind of the same for the weapons and, and offhand as well, right? Uh, sadly, the, the shoulders and the gloves are generally not that good, so the upgrades on them are also not that good. Like if we take a look at the, uh, the gloves real quickly, uh, the merciless one in comparison. So you're gaining 10 armor, 12 healing, uh, sorry, 9 healing, um, Three in and six stam. Like, it's very minor. You get no extra regen and the the actual gain in stats. Like, the 10 armor, you're not going to really notice. The 9 healing, you're not going to really notice because most of your heals are at instants and have low coefficients. Like, shield is like 30% coefficient, right? So, you're going to get three in six stam. It's, it's, it's very minor. Uh, so, this is why we delay the upgrade on the shoulders and the gloves until last. Uh, so that's the PvP items that you're going to generally want. As I said, this is these these items are to swap on. Generally, you're going to be using these if you have them, of course. Uh, and then for the other PvE items, we're going to go for the T6 helm. Same as before, we went T4, T5, T6. Uh, as usual, if you can't get the T6 helm, the NG helm is a good grab. Cloak. There's a couple of cloaks that are a decent option. Uh, if, if you have Sun Shower already, it's pretty good. It's it's definitely not a bad shout. The other two options are Shroud of Forgiveness and Shroud of the Final Stand. I feel like Shroud of the Final Stand is overall a little bit more well-rounded. Um, Shroud of Forgiveness has a lot of Stam, low Int, uh, whereas this is somewhere in the middle. So we're going to go Shroud of the Final Stand. If you do get the other Shroud, that's fine too. It's not the end of the world. Boots. Boots are relatively easy to grab just from the Hydral Trash. Relatively uncontested. So we whack those on. They have a lot of stamina. Decent Int and Spirit and then two Sockets with, with good healing. And then the Ring. This this is the, the Tuffy. So potentially you've got a Coral Band of the Revived from Vash last season. If you have, that's okay. But the Intellect is relatively low on this item. So even though it has a lot of Spirit, the, in, the, the region on it is not as high as it would seem. Um, and Band of the Eternal Restorer has a bunch more intellect. It has 10 MP5, which we can equate to about 20 spirit. And then it has the proc as well as more stamina. So the stats in this, again, are more well-rounded. And it's really easy to get, right? You're just getting it from rep. So we're going to put this on there for now. Because obviously we want to we wanna factor in how easy the, these items to get are as well. Uh, there's no real other good regen options in terms of a ring. So, your third option is actually the Band of Caribou. And this has 6 MP5 on, which is a little bit less than the Eternal Restorer. A little bit less in and stam, but it also has the 30 haste on. So, this is something to keep in mind for sure. If you grab one of these, uh, you can absolutely play around with it. And then Trinket is still going to be the earring. And this is going to be good for most matchups. If you are playing a lot of faster games in threes, then Memento can actually be better in certain situations. But obviously, it's it's way tougher to get. It's going to be way more contested, and it's way more niche. So you're going to find that the earring is more useful in more situations, which is why I've put it on there. And that's it. So the PvE gear this season, actually not that hard to get. Obviously, we've got a trash cloak here. We've got trash boots here, a rep ring. And then the, the toughest pieces to get are going to be the T6 Helm, which obviously is, is relatively uh, high drop chance. 
And then the hardest two pieces is probably going to be the staff and the wand, I would say. The wand, obviously, not that impactful. So don't stress too much about getting it ASAP. The staff is probably going to be your nicest pickup, I would say. Staff along with T6 helm, if you don't already have a, a T5 helm, are going to be the biggest bits. So next up, we're going to do... Let's do enchants. So after a bunch of research uh, and theory crafting, we're going to go for the 15 hit on gloves again. And thinking about it, the helm was actually the better place to put the, the hit, the 14 hit. Since we're losing 7 MP5, right? But we're realistically gaining maybe 2 gem slots worth of hit gems. Which we can now use for regen. And we have epic gems this season, so this turns into 20 spirit worth. 20 spirit, better than 7 MP5. So this is why we're going for the, uh, the hit enchant on the helm. Luna, do you really want to go out that bad? One sec. Go on. Go on, mate. Okay. So, this is most of our hit covered, and we can get the rest from a singular 10 hit gem, which I'm going to put in the shoulders really quickly before I forget about it. And the reason I'm putting it in the shoulders is because... This gets us up to the 3%, which is what we need. This is us. Uh, we're hit cap now. And the reason we put it into shoulders is because we're not really ever going to switch the shoulders out. You might switch the, the neck out. You might switch the braces out. You know, if you are facing a matchup where you know you're not never ever, yeah, never ever targeted, you can chuck some more regen stuff on, some more PvE gear on if you've got it. But the problem is if you have your hit gem in there, then you're going to cause yourself some problems with your hit cap. So this is why we put it in the shoulders. So real quick segue into to, into one jam. I'm going to do the rest of the enchants first. Shoulder enchant is standard. We just do the, the Aldo healing one. Scryer, if you're Scryer, it's not a big difference. Uh, legs is just going to be golden spell thread. Standard. Boot spore speed. Uh, yada, yada, yada. Cloak is going to be spell pen. And this is going to cover our spell pen. This is going to cover Undead Racial. It's going to cover Mark of the Wild. Make sure you dispel Shadow Prop because it won't cover that. Mark of the Wild, if you don't dispel it, is they're going to have five resistances. So usually your first fill will go into Mark of the Wild and then you try and get it off after that to reduce any chance of resists. So next we've got Chest. And we're going to put Resilience on that for now. And I'm going to talk a little bit later about that. Because there is another potential option. I'm just going to do the other enchants first. Brace is actually going to go for 6 MP5 this season. Uh, because, and this is the same logic as with the rings, that the healing that you lose, right, we're going to go for, we're going to go for stats on the rings, right? So we're going to have 8 stats on rings instead of eight, uh, instead of 40 healing, right? And we have 6 MP5 on the braces instead of 30 healings. 6 MP5 worth maybe... You know, 12 or so spirit, depending on how much you're, you're casting. Um, and we don't value the healing that much in PvP, right? As I said before, we are not getting full value out of that stat. And, and it's nicer to try and go for stats that you're getting full value out of. You're not going to notice the, the 30 less healing. It's not going to be the reason that you die 99.9% .9 of the time. You know, it's like... There's, there's going to be so few cases where you would have been like, yeah, man, if I had that 30 extra healing, I would have lived on 1%. You know, it's it's so rare. So we're going to go for the 6 MP5. This is going to make more of a difference in more games. Um, and so is the stats. You know, a bunch of mana, a bunch more regen, and a bunch of extra stamina as well. This might actually keep you alive. So this is where we're going with these enchants. Weapon. I was actually toying with the idea of going with the 30 intellect, but I actually think losing 81 healing is too much. Feel free to try it out. Let me let me know how it goes. Let me know how it feels. I think it's definitely a potential option, depending on, you know, play style, bracket, that kind of thing. You know, in threes, maybe the intellect is going to be better. It's, it's, it's very non-cookie cutter, so 
I'm going to put the, the the healing for now, and we'll leave it at that because we've already gone a little bit off off road with the uh, the rings and the braces. But I think that that's that's acceptable. So right now we are on. Let me put it up here. We want to have defense. So right now we're on 267 resilience, right? Health looking pretty good. Mana looking okay. Spirit looking okay. Uh, so we still got some gems to chuck in. Now, after a bunch of theory crafting and, and just data gathering, we basically concluded that most games you are inside the five second rule or outside the way you want to put it. You, you're basically not getting full spirit regen 70% uh, of the time or more. 70% is like the lower bound. And at 70%, these are still better than the four spirit equivalents, right? The purifieds. These are still more mana. So we're going to go for the Royal Shadow Songs. And they only get better the less that you're getting full spirit regen. Um, it gets quite in-depth, which is pretty much out of the scope of this video. But yeah, just trust me on it. These are going to give you more mana overall. Um, and we're going to use all epic gems in this video because you're going to have them eventually. It's Abyss List after all. You know, farm some gold, buy them if you're not in a guild, etc. They are very nice. And it's it's free extra stats, essentially, once you've got them. Now, we, we need a bunch more resilience. We put our hit gems so we can just chuck, I would say, two resilience gems in the chest. It's fine. That's going to bring us up to 294. Now... These last few gems are somewhat personal preference. Like, so you can just go ham and put three more resilience gems in them if you want, right? And that's going to bring you up to free 24. And this is with the PvE staff on, right? When you put your three PvP weapons on, and I'm assuming you have some Season 2 ones already. Um, but once you have the Season 3 ones, you will get 62 resilience from putting three, three PvP weapons on, right? Weapon off hand and wand. That gives you a bonus of 62 resilience. So you're going to be well up, right? You're going to be at, uh, what, 256. Um, with those weapons equipped, right? You're going to be chilling. If you do put the extra three resilience gems, then you're going to be on 286 if you're targeted. Sorry, 386. What am I saying? Um, so, yeah, 356 and 386. I believe I misspoke there. Uh, so that's, that's a lot, right? That's potentially even more than you need. So you can actually get more value against other stuff by chucking some spirit gems in the neck. What's the gem called? Oh, you know what? I didn't click this. Um, I knew it was sparkling. I was like, I lost my mind. So you want the sparkling Empyrean Sapphire in here and here because the set bonus, uh, sorry, the socket bonuses are not that good. It's three stam. We can actually forgo it and it's okay. Now your other option you can do is you can put resilience gems in these two. Get the stamina and then put 15 spirit on the chest. And this way you will gain five resilience, six stam, but you will lose five spirit. So it depends what you value more as a player. If you feel like you're dying a lot, then you might want more resilience. If you feel like you're going umlot, you want more regen. So that's your, your options here. And then in the boots, we're going to put 10 spirit. And then the last yellow gem. Again, you can put the resilience one if you want. Yeah, you can put the 10 resilience gem in if you want. And that's fine. That will take you over to 304. That's probably the safest way. Or you can be really try hard if you want more regen. Like you're gagging for it. And you can go for the Seer's uh, Chrysoprase, which is 4 and 5 spirit. Uh, I'm just going to put resilience in for now because there's no way I'm going to be going and farming that. I have way too much other stuff to do. And we're ending up with 304 real, uh, resil. Plus 62 when we're targeted. Which is going to keep us nice and safe. While having a good amount of regen as well. And that's it. That's the best list. Was it? Oh, um, we forgot the meta as well. Sorry. Uh, it's going to be obviously the insightful. You can also... When you have extra points at the end of the season, buy a PvP helm and put a... 
I've got this gem as well. Doing well. There we go. Um, yeah, you can buy a season a season three helm or whatever. It's season two helm, season one helm for honor next season even. Um, but it's just something that you can put the stun resist meta in and swap onto if you know you're going to be targeted. That's something for more higher rated games, though, I feel like. Or, or, you know, if you really feel like you're struggling against double DPS, there's a lot of DPS, uh, double DPS in your sort of rating range, that kind of thing. Then it's definitely something you can you can think about and look into. So there is th this is your standard gear set, right? And this is going to work for you nine times out of ten. But in some matchups, you know, or if you're playing RMP, stuff like that, RLP, any sort of fast matchups that end in you know games nine times out of ten end in like two minutes, your regen is not going to be that valuable. Because you're not going to go oom, right? It's going to be quite rare that you go oom, in fact. So the extra, you know, all this spirit on the gear actually doesn't kick in really that much. You're not spending much time out of the five second rule. You're casting constantly. You're dispelling constantly. So the spirit actually loses so much value on your gear. Because the reason we like the spirit is because in twos we get a lot of time out of five second rule. We're running behind pillars. We're kiting. Game slows down. That kind of thing. If you're playing threes and you're playing a really fast matchup, or generally playing really fast matchups as a fast, fast-paced comp, you might want a different, you know, a few different items. And this is absolutely optional, but it's an option where you can switch to these items, and it will be more powerful, I believe. And I'm just going to show you this now. So this is another gear set that I made. Now this, and and quick side note, they don't actually have the the Vindicator's pendant of haste. I don't know what it's called, but there's actually a haste one on the PTR, which we would use in this set. But yeah, we are going for about ten percent haste with this, right? Which is is hefty. It's good, right? We're gonna get a lot faster dispels in. We're gonna get a lot more things done in our fast paced game. And this actually might be the difference between you know deathing a sheep. Uh, saving somebody, getting somebody out of a sheep so they can kick, anything like that. You know, getting someone out of a fear so they can get on their target and not get kited, anything like that. The haste can be valuable, right? Because our region is not so valuable, we can actually replace some of it with this haste. The the items are a little bit trickier to get, so obviously double band of Karabor, skull of all land. The skull is not imperative for this build, right? It's going to be very tough to get as a priest. You're going to be waiting maybe three, four skulls most likely at least. Um, so good luck getting the skull, but it's not imperative in this build. If you don't get it, you just whack the hit on the helm and one hit gem and you're fine. Um, then you'll have your hit cap, which is the main thing that's worrying. And then you still just, you can just run earring. You can run whatever here, you know, it's, it's the trinket slot is not actually that impactful. You could potentially even run the Aran trinket, right. And, and get the, about one K mana out of it for the short game. So we've got a, we've got a haste cloak here. Very nice haste cloak. This is from Illidan. We've got the crafted haste braces. We've got a very nice haste uh, belt. I believe this is from Hydral. And then we've got the double trash drop ring. Uh, there is actually no haste wand. So you could potentially just run the PvP wand to bring your resilience up a bit if you need. If you if you feel uncomfortable being under 300. But yeah, this is just an example of swapping the items, the off-part items around while still balancing your stats and keeping yourself, you know, with a good amount of resilience. Uh, and you can see down here the difference in regen. We've got 242 spirit versus 306, you know. So this is definitely not going to be better in twos. Uh, we've got 91 MP5 on gear versus 84 on gear. Keep in mind that this number does not inc incorporate the MP5 you get from meditation from spirit. Just on this website, it's a little bit bugged. Um... But yeah, we get the 10% haste, so it's it's a nice alternative, it's a nice option. So these items are worth grabbing if you can get them uh, and messing around with once you get to that level. It's just a nice, nice little, I guess, example of how it's so easy to change a few things for a different purpose. Uh, and And how many real options there are with the TBC gear and, and you know... It's a lot of it does come down to personal choice. So this one is obviously the season three bis, but it's a generalized bis. So 
try to, I guess, incorporate the stuff I've said, but also learn from it. Use your own brain so that it all makes sense and you can kind of make your own calls and judgments is kind of what I'm getting at. But yeah, that was it. I hope it was useful. Tried to get a little bit of info in there as well rather than just some gear. Hope I haven't rambled for too long. I probably have. But that's it. Next video will be on sort of gearing up a new character, that kind of thing. So check probably tomorrow if you're interested in that. I'll put a link to it in the description, something like that as well. Have a great Christmas. See ya.